for world class universities. Okay, three of us set up a center of world class universities in USM, and that's quite large caliber for all other universities. It is some, 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 some way of measuring them. These are the three guys that started the, the war. Okay, and it has produced a lot of trouble for the Chinese government. Okay, because when they produce their ranking, they put a lot of old universities out of the league because of their criteria. And we'll come back to their criteria, why some of the universities, however hard they try, they will never get to the top. Because mission is almost impossible, almost impossible. So this is ARWU, is the S, uh, Academic Ranking of World University or SGHT, Shanghai Zhao Tong. Okay? And here you cannot read it, uh, so sorry. So USA in, in uh, 2013 has got 35 uh, top 50, Western Europe 6, UK 5, Canada 2, Japan 2. And if you look at this one on the right here, is THE's Times Higher Education 2012 to 2013, USA has got 29, UK has got 7, Western Europe 4, other Asia 4, Canada 3, Australia 2, Japan 1. So ARWU favors the Western Europe more than the the time higher education because of the way they they do the calculation. This one slide shows you the characteristics of a world class universities. It's about aligning eager key factors. The first one is about concentration of talent. Sorry, the okay, concentration of talent. This is favorable governance. And third one is abundant resources. Uh, yes, please. Huh? No. Uh, no. I received a question when I presented this in engineering. How can you become a world class? How can you carry out the world? Class research in not so world class facilities. Uh, <laughs> say, I don't know. I, it's not <laughs> okay. so, don't, 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 don't shoot the messenger, but no, no, it's okay. We, we know what we are. Okay, so three things resources, governance, and uh, concentration of talent. So, if you can read, first of all, the graduate students. If you look at Myra 2, Myra 1, how you criteria, weight of graduate students is very important. Okay. Yeah, we'll agree. Yeah. Harvard and Stanford has about 59, 60, 64% graduate students. MIT 60%. The UK University is a bit low. Oxford, Cambridge, 37, 35%. Beijing, 53, Tokyo, 45, LSE, 51. Of course, by doing this, my love will say to you, if you want to become a research university, you have to have a 50% or 50-50 undergrad, undergrad, undergrad. What is our numbers now? Are we 50%? No. I don't know what the number is. Uh, but I know universities trying to get 50%, so they reduce the number of undergrad students. One university in the South is currently doing it. So is that the way forward? So that's one. Graduate students criteria. So concentration of talent. This is very important. That you must have teachers and researchers, the incoming students, the balance between undergrad and grad students, and the international dimensions, because these are the ones that is going to be mentioned. For example, international dimension. In Caltech, you have 37% foreign faculty. In Harvard, 30%. In Oxford, 36%. Uh, technical Zurich, 60, 60%. Uh, foreign students, Harvard 90%, Cambridge 18%. Now, when we were in Toronto in engineering last time, well, we have 30% foreign. 
all the faculty from India and Pakistan. So we were international at that time. We were world class. Back in the 90, early 90s, we were world class at that time. Nowadays, we have hardly reach 5%, I think, in Indonesia. So, grad students, foreign faculty, foreign students, fourth one, abundant resources. In the US, 3.3% of the GDP is spent on the higher education. And Europe, only 1.3%. I.e., in terms of, of monetary, this is 54,000 per student, and this is 13,500 per student. That is in terms of resources per head going into the students at the university. And when you talk about endowments, the U.S. are well known for the endowments. And let's look at the figures. The Harvard, Harvard has got 25.6 billion U.S. dollars in 2009. It was stated that when I attended one course by one Harvard professor, we paid him like the committee had paid him one million ringgit to come and give us a course for five days. At that point, before the 2008 or 2009 crash, Harvard Endowment Fund was stated to be 33 billion US dollars. So it could be kurang 90 billion ringgit kind of thing, which is equivalent to Petronas. The big kurang, the big kurang Harvard macam Petronas. That give us a scale of kita nak lawan Petronas, kita beli minyak boleh lah, nak lawan Petronas. Yield 16.3 billion. Stanford, 12.6 billion, Princeton, 12.6 billion, and so on and so on. If you go down and compare to Cambridge, 6 billion Oxford going down 5.7, Edinburgh uh, to 6.4, Manchester to 0.4, uh, Princeton 12.6, all the lower round even 12 billion. University of Texas 12 billion, Glasgow 1.64. And what about us? How much do we have in our endowment fund? Only the vice chancellor know, okay? I don't know about this one. I got, got. I don't. I I don't know, my dear. I insignificant. Enough to, enough to. I don't know. So we have look at the criteria. Okay, we have look at the graduate students. We have look at the foreign students, international dimensions. We have look at the the resources that is given in the states. We have looked at the endowment funds, and now look at the resources. Not only government funding, endowment, tuition fees, and research funding. Back. The tuition fees data is not here, but so when you talk about money, it always reminds us of the football club. So if you have money, like Barcelona or Manchester United, you can buy good strikers, and if you don't have money like Kotobat or Klantan FC, whatever, are we comparable? There's no answer to that. Okay, just imagine what money can do to you. I mean, okay? I think we can buy this guy and he's 50 years old. <laughs> so, is that is that about it? I mean, it is, it is, it is world class industry is about money? If you buy more money, if you pour more money, then you can become a world cup. I think that's what Singapore model is. Pump more money, get good players in, improve the performance. Okay? If you train the locals, uh, the locals always dream of leaving Singapore. They don't leave, so they dream of leaving Singapore. Going to Canada or Australia or somewhere. Oh. Oh. Okay, the third one is governance. How we govern ourselves. Now he said that there are two issues here. Which one? The first one is the freedom from civil service rules, and second is management autonomy. So that reminds us who we are. Okay, we are a, <laughs> a civil servant. How can we be a civil servant and at the same time free from civil service rules? That would yeah. And management autonomy, if you are paid by the JPA, how can you have autonomy? You cannot live with your parents and say that it is your house. You have to move to another house and then say it is your house. 
nhất tôi sẽ nâng đồng hồ lại So what is the favor of the government? He said that you should have freedom from single civil rules, you have, should have management autonomy, you should have independent board with outside representation, and you have selection of leadership team. This is a big issue in Malaysia. They have talked about this. How do we select the vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the deans, and also these are all big issues. Okay? And they have done talking about it, and then they say that at the end of the day, if you live with your parents, you have to listen to your parents. Okay? So, again, he compared University of Player with, with NUS. And a lot of people is thinking in your seats and different. Well, we don't talk about this in Malaysia. We don't talk about the color of our skin and what's in our head. You know, we talk about food. So, here we, we talk about this of Player versus NUS. He said, talent, talent wise, you have, he said that all this while you have selection bias in favor of Muni Putra, the cycle of Mimaru. And less than 5% foreign students and few foreign professors. And he believed that NUS is very highly selective. 43% of graduate students are foreign, and they have a lot of foreign talent as foreign professors. Okay? I have no problem with that. And financially, UM has got $385 million, about 40,000 per student. Compared to NUS, 1 billion annual endowment, um, about 39,000 per student. Money wise, you have lost already. And in terms of governance, he said that University of Malaya, the appointment of BC is highly political. They have already 10 BCs since until 2008. This is the Prime Minister's statement. And in Singapore, only 5 BCs. And therefore, say more professional in Singapore. UM is restricted by government regulations and control and unable to hire top foreign professors. professors. NUS is a status of a private corporation and able to attract world class foreign researchers. And he brings us the story of how NUS set up the NUS Solar Energy Research Institute. Okay? How, they, how did they start? This guy, who was given the task by the government to set up this Solar Research Institute, Flew, flew to Germany and bring two first class tickets to this professor asking him and his wife to spend a week in Singapore to look at the facilities in Singapore. My dear Karim, you will never ever travel first class in the SM, okay? <laughs> and if you travel first class in the SM, the SPRM will wait for you at the airport. So, so this guy came over to us he has all, I think he's from Frankhofer, I think. I, I believe he's from Frankhofer Institute. I said, well, I have my labs here. I've got all the things set up here in Germany. But hey, come over to Singapore for one day, one week. You know, stay in Singapore and see what happened. What was So when, when this guy came to Singapore with his wife, of course, I think they have separate agenda for the world. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Singapore is a very business-minded people. So after looking around, and he decided to join and you have solar energy research institute. So money talks, man. money talks. Okay? So this guy came over and set up and so on. So, so I, I don't think we can do that. We can go into Bangladesh to do two business class tickets or something like that. I don't know. But not to Germany. Yet. So we have already talked about that, all the criteria, finance, standards, constitution, international dimensions, governance, and so on. And we have seen where we are now, right? We have we are not that free to decide. We have very limited money. Okay? Uh, foreigners, international students, also we are also very limited in that dimension. So let's talk about the road to academic excellence. So how do we how do we get to become a world class university? How do we take the path to glory? There are three ways. The first one is mergers, the second one is upgrading its existing institutions, the third one is creating new institutions. Okay? Mergers. Smaller entities get together, become big entities, bigger entities, better efficiency, and better resources, and so on, so you can do bigger things. Okay? Upgrading existing things. Can you keep presented to us how this thing has been done elsewhere? So sometimes when you merge, like this year, HP and Compact, 
So you got a merger between two sick people, you may you may never be able to compete with one healthy person. So it depends on how and the, 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 the chemistry and the mechanics of the merger. It is done in Russia. It's imposed by the government where they have the federal universities program uh, based on geographical proximity, but not academic complementary. So we have them versus the Unimed, Merna. So we share facilities because we are close or the most example, WOU, the most so share facilities and but no academic complementary and created tension between create more tension, okay? Upgrading approach. This is the less costly one. Uh, uh, challenge of creating a culture of excellence and focus on governance. I think this is the part that the Malaysian government is taking, the upgrading approach. So, if you are a Titanic, you don't see what's coming. So, we might. This is an example of a successful case of an upgrading approach. UCLA, SU, University of Maryland, University of Leeds, this was mentioned, Harvard University and Gonzaga. So then you've got this creating new institution. This is what is happening in Saudi Arabia. King House, King Abdullah, University of Science and Technology. It's also been replicated in Kazakhstan, Nazarbayev University, and Skoltech. This is higher cost. In fact, I think it's the highest cost of trying to get yourself to become world class university. Set up a new university, bring all new fresh talents in, and suddenly you are top 50, top 100 in day one. Okay? Uh, higher cost, you get the right culture from the beginning, and how do you create a deep tradition of research? And academic freedom. Academic freedom in Saudi Arabia. I've never been there, but. Okay, think about it. So, which approach works best? Upgrading and merging is complicated, and he said that establishing a new university from scratch is potentially easier. Uh, we in BSM always think about the next question is it sustainable? Okay. I mean, for Saudi Arabia, it's sustainable for the next 100 years old. And it's pumping like 10 billion US dollars every year. So, if that, if that is the case, is leapfrogging possible? Can we short circuit the route to become? Is it possible? So, that was the question. All world class is vintage bias. It favors the old universities. If you look at the top universities, none of them are less than 50 years old. That's 100, 200, 300 years old. So it's like wine. The, the, the older you are, the better you are. So that might be one of the cases, so-called vintage bias. And you talk about leapfrogging. We don't like to be in a queue. Yeah, this is, if people say, what, how do you define Penangite? If they don't like to be in a queue, except what to makan. So, every country wants to become a, to have a world-class university. And it, it, when it go, when they analyze by region, so-called excellent initiative, okay? 1989, 2004, nobody cares. In Africa, in the Middle East, nobody cares. But 2005, 2012, Asia Pacific, I got 14 excellence initiatives. Uh, Europe, 18, and Middle East, one. North America, one. Total, there are. So, what is this EI? You see our name came out, our country name came out in 2005 and 2012. Malaysia started the Asia uh, the Excellent Asia. These are two things, RU and APEC. More money, give you more money. So if the rabbits, if you've got the right rabbits, the carrot will work. But if you if you carrot harimau, it doesn't work. So so this is Excellent Asia. And we fall into that criteria. In Africa, only one country is going on that line, it's And other countries have started much earlier. Russian Federation is also in the same boat, trying to do it. So one of the few characteristics of excellence initiative is that it may face some uh, uh, crisis, 
like Japan and Spain, Japan has some financial crisis, Spain is in a horrible shape, bleak and terrible, terrible economic shape. A face program like an endowment program like in France, and sometimes they've got scholarship programs. I talked to some of the people that, that who, he, who are in the know, they said that RU may be phased out next year. So the excellent initiative was a five year program, four years program, next year we're gonna we miss that 80 million hit. We will surely miss the 18 million years. Don't have a good old days with our new grants and so on. Okay, my dear? So, prepare for the tough times ahead. So, let's see uh, what happened to China. China has got two programs. The first is called 211 program. They wanted to be 100, to produce 100 top quality universities for the 21st century. And the 985 program is to develop nine world-class universities in the C9 league to compete with the premier league of universities worldwide. People are very aware of this program in China. Okay? And then it was extended to 39 universities, and as a result, uh, they have got world-class universities, top uh, nine universities in 2003, and 28 universities now in 2013. China is consciously trying to get into the top world-class universities. So what are the accelerating factors? What are causing people to take this game seriously? First is internationalization. Uh, just to give you the research capacity, this is the research grant by country of host institution. Because the number of inhabitants in Cyprus is small, then you've got the research capacity uh, high in Cyprus. Uh, International dimension, because on, of the diaspora, uh, there's a lot of Koreans all over the world, Chinese uh, origin all over the world, and there's foreign and foreign trained academics and, and language. So, uh, as you see, five times more people are learning English in China than there are people in England. So, this is what is accelerating changes in China. This is uh, accelerating factors. We want to spend time on that. Challenge of entering a crowded market. What do you do when you are uh, offering programs? Like some of us are trying to offer programs which other people are also doing. So what? How do we market our program and so on? We will not spend more time on that. Oh, why? I've got like twenty minutes. What? No, no. They don't have. <laughs> so. We pass this uh, obstacles to talent mobilization. He talks about visa and so on. I think we have said the, the, the right the right mindset for what is a world class university. I'm going to move on to, to ranking because I, I would like to spend some more time on that. So we, we are back to these three issues: talent, resources, and governance. That's what define what a world class university. I will stop there and I'll go directly to ranking. Do you have any questions? Reuters, Thomson Reuters, 
in 2010 and produced so called TES, E H E S, Times Higher Education World Industry Ranking. So, when you talk about ranking, there are many types of ranking. The easiest to understand, the popular ones are the QS ranking. The more difficult ones are the Times Higher Education uh, ranking. We will go and look at each individual uh, criteria. Everybody, well, most people are confused. Sometimes you are in, sometimes you are top, top like university player. The first time they go in like top 100, and then suddenly you are not no longer there. What happened? They have not changed anything. I'm not even a single post to change, but there you go. So let's read what, what Andrew Mazar said. This guy is working with Daily Telegraph, and this is for the result for 2012. Things look rosy for Cambridge last month. Yes, the university may have lost pole position in the world university ranking to the nerds paradise MIT. But in taking second place, three slots clear of its great rival Oxford and two ahead of UCL, it reaffirmed its status as the UK's leading light in higher education, or did it? Today's world rankings paint a different picture. Cambridge only, only manages seventh place while Oxford climbs up to join second. UCL is a mere 17th. And what of MIT? It now gazes up longingly at first place, California Institute of Technology. The obvious reasons for these dis discrepancies is the use of different ranking system. Today's Times Higher Education table are a different beast to last month's QS World University ranking. Okay, this guy knows what he talks about. Okay, so suddenly you are up there and suddenly you are down after a month. So although normally answering the same question, they don't share a method the same methodology. Data set or indeed the winner. So the winner can be different. Continuing from that article, so rather than arguing which over which is right, UK University should perhaps just be glad that the widely respected Shanghai ranking, which is the AWRU or the Shanghai Jiangdong, is less well known on these shows. None of UK University come close to ending Harvard's standards at the top of that list. Okay? So where can prospective students turn for answers? The simple truth is that there is no such thing as a definitive table. So, but in fact, the widely different outcomes of this table make them more useful, but, but not less. The key is knowing how to interpret them. So you must know how to read this table. And our friend also have a views of this, because none of the Malaysian universities in the Times Higher Education Ranking. Okay? No Malaysian university in Times Higher Education Ranking. Is it only peculiar to Tim Shah? No, everyone. I just managed to get this on the blog, so it's easy for me to go. Because I remember he said something, oh, we are not there, 400 top world university ranking. Okay? How do we then understand this? Look at the way QS is doing. We have to understand, just, we, if we understand just the, the bare skeleton of how they do the ranking, then we can understand what are the main parameters. QS ranking, the top 40% is academic reputation based on global survey. Some of you have received email invitation from QS asking you to participate in this survey. I received it three years ago. That time was Tantri. Tantri was a big no-no on the QS, so I just clicked you. So employer reputation based on global survey of graduate employees. So the 50% based on survey. 50% based on survey. Another 30% is faculty to student ratio. 20% is citations per faculty. Only 20% on publication. Okay? Okay? So we have lost already, what? Pablo, Pro, Video Pro. 5% on international student ratio. Okay? And another 5% on international staff ratio. Okay? So if we want to win, if you are the vice chancellor now, and you want to strategize the university to get a higher ranking in QS, what would you do?
They have to go to Chicago, they have to go to this big ITP e conference where they've got like 3,000 attendees. Not like 30 of, of your friends in somewhere in Bali, one. All right, come on. So, so this is QS. Okay? So if you are good in QS ranking, it doesn't mean that you have to. Maybe it's perceptions. Perceptions. And perceptions is dominated by what? History, news, I mean, MIT, huh? Harvard, Stanford, Yale, yeah, the same big guy, the same something. We cannot get it. If you are in university, nobody will know. Okay. So, everyone is clear, okay? Okay, huh? So, no, now you are expert in QS. Of course, I'm from mechanical and aeronautical and manufacturing, so I'm biased to my school. So, and I also have a presentation with me. So, so let me, I discovered that USM, or you cannot see it, is already in mechanical in 101 to 150. This is, this is very well. Are we that good? We are slightly below the University of College London, UCL, and above the University of California, San Diego. I don't think you are that good, but there you are. There you are, my school is slightly higher the University of California, San Diego. You don't have to go to California to get a good degree in mechanical engineering. It's a very good thing to go to So why spend money to go there? Huh? Oh. And this I got the data from the VC presentation, Society Cloud. Yeah? So this is where we are in 2013. Social science in QS is 153, 153. The life sciences, 361. Natural sciences, 262. Engineering and technology is 169, and of course, Indonesia is a rank number one, except for life sciences and medicine. And by subject, can you read that? Yeah. By subject, environmental studies number 30, uh, we are very proud with chemical engineering, they are number 38. English, 191, <coughs> mechanical, 101, receiver, for example, electrical, for example. Material science, 151, 200, and so on. So you can, you can read it yourself. Okay? Well, I don't think we are that good compared to University of California, San Diego, but anyhow, thanks for Now, we move on to the second one, which is a times higher education. This is, this is tough, man. Okay? Times higher education, this is the website. You can go to the website, PhD World Reputation Ranking. Okay? Powered by Thomson Reuters. This is powered by Thomson Reuters. And what is Thomson Reuters? Thomson Reuters is ISI. Okay? So they make money from our publication. Can you do that? This is the best slavery system. We make the paper, we send the paper, get it published, they own the copyright. This is the best form of slavery. And we don't even complain. <laughs> Right? We don't even complain. They own the copyright. We don't even take it. We are proud of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what's the use of going to war? You can invade people's minds like this. There's no need to go to war. Okay, you work for us for free. Give us your copyright. Oh, son of a How do we go back? I'll do I'll read it to you all. Times higher education ranking. Five percent from industry income. Five percent international diversity. If you remember your QS, it's also five percent. Weightage. Yeah. International ratio ratio of international to domestic staff is three percent. Ratio of international to domestic student is two percent. Okay. Teaching. Reputational survey is only fifteen percent. PhD award per academic is 6%, so that's important. How many PhD uh, graduate you produce? Undergrad admitted per academic is 4.5%. Income per academic is your tuition fees, 2.25%. And PhD ratio of PhD to undergraduate degree awarded is 2.25%. These are more detail on the time side education survey. Research, volume, income, and reputation. Bigger factor, volume, income, and reputation. 
The survey, 19.5%. Research income from research is 5.25% scale. Papers for research and academic staff, 4.5%. Ada, 4.5%. Public research income over total research income is 0.75%. Citation, ada citation. Impact is 32.5%. Huh? Impact factor is now a big issue because of course, right, the Thompson. Thompson factors, Tari Pakar with the impact factor, so it would impact factor 32.5%. QS, impact factor, tak main. Test, higher education test is impact factor 32.5%. So, one third is impact factor, the others is research income and the international development. You got the picture? I hope you have you have the overall. Okay. And in Asia, there's only one university that came out. Where is our friend? University of Malta Malaysia, and I make it bigger. UKM is here, 87, slightly above National Yangming University of Taiwan, and slightly below. American University of Beirut and Okoyama University. Only one university came in, 87 UKM. Test cannot provide the ranking unless kita provide the data. So unless we participate, we must actively participate. We must send in the data. Baru dia boleh anggap kita sebagai part of the rank. If the US rank us without us participating, I don't know how. Okay, QS rank us without us participating in the survey. Test, no, if you don't participate, your name will come out. So I would assume that UKM consciously goes in and get it. And I'm, what is their objective? Well, maybe, I don't know, it must be very clear. So, so UKM, done. Test, none of Malaysian University is there. Me, Lin Kit Siang was right. None of the Malaysian University was there. So we have done the two ranking already. Now the third one. This is the Leiden ranking. I need to make this bigger. You read that? The CWTS Leiden ranking measures the scientific performance of 500 major universities using a sophisticated set of bibliometric indicators the ranking aims to provide highly accurate measurements of the scientific impact of universities and of universities' involvement in scientific collaboration. Are they two? Scientific impact and scientific collaboration. Oh, so policymakers, remember this. Collaboration. More money, family, overseas. Okay? You cannot collaborate with guys from Penang. The CWTS Ranking rank is based on Web of Science Index publications from the period, period 2008 to 2011. Web of Science, Thompson, again, Scopus, not mine. We have told this again and again in general, do not publish it, Scopus is the general, don't waste your time on that, go to AISI. Already two ranking, test dengan Biden. You wanna play the game? This is the game, okay? No short circuit. All right, so, got the message already, right? ISI, ISI, ISI. The CWTS Library Ranking 2013 is based on publications in Thomson Reuters, Web of Science database, book publications, publications in conference presenting, publications in journals not indexed in the world of science. Scopus are fine, are not included. Only publications of the web, <laughs> they reiterate, I don't know how many times they reiterate their website, only publications of the web of science document type article and review are considered in the Library Ranking. Leiden ranking is not by survey. It is based on the ISI database. You want to go in, you want to go out, doesn't matter. They will cite your numbers. Okay? And this to me is a true rank. Nothing survey, survey. Survey, I will always say my friend is the best people in the world. Huh? So, let's look at there are many parts of ranking, but we don't have. We, have, we are very busy researchers, right? We don't have time for this. So let's look at what are the impact factors, the factors that will affect our ranking in the flight ranking. Following indicators are being used. 
the first one is MCS, the mean citation score, i.e. the average number of citations of the publication of a university, i.e. citations, not publication but citation, better. So citations refer to all oh, guys publishing and your work. Right? MNCS is a mean normalized citation score. The average number of citations of the publication of university normalized for field differences and publication year. Okay? Don't know what it means, but they talk about citations. Huh? They don't have citations. PP top 10%, i.e. proportion of top 10% publication. The proportion of the publication of a university compared with other publications in the same field, in the same year, belong to the top 10% most frequently cited. That is citation. If you belong to the top 10% frequently cited, Akin and Nisaki. Then you may want to check it. So for a new university, by the this that is the impact indicators. The third the second. Blinded measures too. Your impact, your contribution to science, and your collaboration. And it will satu PP collaboration, proportional of inter-institutional collaborative publication. Guys, they are going to according to the number of MOU, MOA sign. Number of papers published with the number of journals, authors atas. Authors in this case, science special. Authors in this case, Brunei Darussalam. Not here. Bukan MOA sign between USM and Brunei Darussalam. The boss is not here. So, first the collaboration, and then PP international collaboration, i.e. proportional of international collaboration, collaborative publications, the proportion of the publication of a university that have been co-authored by two or more countries. This is what we need to bring back to the management that I think we have to encourage not going to conferences anymore, but have joint publication. How do we encourage this, Karim, without using money? We only know money. We are like creature of money, creature of sugar. Yeah. We are sugar, sugar oriented creature. Oh, I need to escape here and make ourselves bigger. Can you see it? Can you see? Can you read? There. Yeah. Do you see where you are? Can you see where you are? Here, you know, see that science measure is 196 in Leiden ranking. Uh, we are slightly below IIT Karakpo. Are we that good? IIT Karakpo? We are slightly below. IIT Karakpo is 194. Okay. You know, see science measure is 196. Tehran University, 198. And we are higher than Hokkaido University. Are we, are we that good, guys? Are we? Are we that good? Are both Hokkaido universities slightly below University of Alberta? I don't know. I mean, I know that we are slightly below the University of California, San Diego, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I know what to do. So, where is our friend? We have friends. We still have friends in Dynamic. Our friends from University of Mayor is 204 in 2013. We are 196. Our friends in university layer is 204. We are slightly higher than national chain of university. I can't believe that. I thought those Taiwanese are very publication oriented. But anyhow, this is not what we say, it's what Leiden, Leiden says about us. So sometimes when you do this, you, you're smiling alone, you know. But to be yes, everybody goes in. Is yes, everyone class university? I don't know, guys. The best for one. Yeah. No, no. By the ranking is based on ISI. Yeah, you publish and you got your names with the other rankings of collaborations and plus in fact of indicated. We we now let us define we. <laughs> you and me and Karim we recognize that, but that doesn't matter. So who is who are we? Is something else. Okay. So 
lighter ranking in Asia, uh, according to discipline, biomedical and health 98, and you 94, life and earth sciences. I don't know. Life is so good in life and earth sciences. In Asia, you're number one. Mathematics and computer science 61. Our friends in MU is 78. Natural sciences 93. Natural sciences engineering 93. Our friends in MU is 107. So, this is something to feel good about, except for social science and humanities. You're, you're not publishing, guys. Your, your record is not there in the, in the ISI. So, you need to to memucuk kawan-kawan kita daripada soft science and humanities. Guys, guys, come on. Come on, pull it up. Okay? Don't give don't, don't reasons, okay? So, line ranking, without the line ranking, okay? So, you're clear with that. And the last one. The last one is on the academic ranking of world universities. Sometimes they call ARW, or sometimes they call Shanghai Jiao Tong SJSHJT. Okay? Now, this is from their website. You can go to their website. I'm just going to. You see these top universities? Let me, let me make it bigger for you. Number one, Harvard. Number two, Stanford. Number three, UC Berkeley. Number four, MIT. Number five, Cambridge. Six, Caltech. Seven, Princeton. Eight, Columbia. Nine, Chicago. Ten, Oxford. Now, this, this. <coughs> you don't question this, right? <laughs> you don't even have the courage to question. So it give us the ranking, MIT and Stanford U in terms of technology, MIT ring supreme in the engineering and technology and computer science, MIT, Stanford, uh, UC Berkeley, University of Texas, Austin, and then Illinois, Urbana Champaign, UC Santa Barbara, and so on and so forth. None of, none of our friends are there. Let's look at the measurement. How do they measure? How does this guy from Shanghai measure the performance of the world-class universities? The first one, the top one is the BIDA. Science, Engineering, Life, Medical, and Social. Alright, we go by the row. The first row, 10% is given to alumni. None of the ranking before this consider alumni. They give 10% to your alumni, not just any alumni. You have to be a Fields Medals winner in, ma in mathematics or Nobel Prize winners in one of the three, chemistry and physics. This is in science since 1961. Engineering, but I have Nobel Prize winner, I have Fields Medals, so it doesn't count. Life Sciences, Nobel Prize winner in Physiology or Medical since 1961. By the way, I was born in 1966. So, alumni and medical also winning Nobel Prizes in Physiology or Medical, Medicine. And Social Science, Nobel Prize winner in Economics since 1961. A truly measure exceptional ability in each of these disciplines. You have this alumni and alumni Alumni. Alumni bukan bersara. Alumni is graduate. Atau mereka kita boleh beli. Alumni tak boleh beli. So they were able, those very smart people have come to your university and later on become professors in some other universities and won Nobel Prize or Field Medal Prize. Okay? Second, award. 10%. 10 gone already. Oops. Award. Any of your staff in science, winning field medal prize in chemistry or double prize, that is 50%. Again, engineering doesn't apply this criteria. So you have to win Nobel Prize in medicine, physiology, or economics. 25% gone already. Gone. None of our graduates win Nobel Prize. None of our lecturers are Nobel Prize. So gone already, okay? High side. High side is highly cited 
researchers or okay high side is highly cited researchers 25% is given now how do we define high side there is a website for highlycited.com and you can google your name there and i can be sure your name is not there Okay, five categories, maths, physics, chemistry, geoscience, space science, engineering are the three category, engineering, computer science, material science, in biology, they, all these plants, plant, microbiology, immunology, whatever, all these highly cited researchers, these are categories, okay? So go to highlycited.com, 25%. So berapa dah kira? 50%. 50% gone already in Shanghai Chow Tau. Okay, publication. Papers index in science citation index again ISI scopus tak main. Twenty five percent ada lah, ni boleh lah, boleh lah masuk ada berkat twenty five percent. All papers in in citation index, science citation index are counted. So you can do three more and then top 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 is how many of those papers are published in the top journals? These are given twenty five percent. I.e. percentage of papers published in the top 20% journals of the fields. Okay, some of All top 20% engineering, medical, or whatever. Now in Sanggar Sanjo, they give top what? Top 15%. I should think they should reduce the top 20%, huh? So that we can selarah dengan Shanghai Jauh Tau. A lot more videos, right? And then there is a reason why you get the top 20%. What is this? Get us into Shanghai Jauh Tau. Top 15% is too harsh. Top 10%, come on. Tell the guys in the center, top 10% is nothing. Else. Top 10 Shanghai is all top 10%. Top 10%, top 10%, top 10%, top 10%. Right. Ni boleh. Saya rasa boleh. Uh, in the last count, tangga uh, saja ada 97, 96 minutes. Well, we might not be top 100, but we can be top 300 people, I think, in Shanghai. So if we participate and we give them the data. And fund 25% for it's only total engineering related research expenditure because uh, for engineering you don't have the field winners and the Nobel Prize winners they create they counted how much fun you attract from the industry so let's let's look at the indicators Amira stop me here so alumni we have done that we have you know already what is field matters award number of staff institution winning Nobel Prize physics staff is defined ah this is important Staff is defined as those who work at an institution at the time of winning the prize. At the time of publication or at the time of winning? Suppose if you win Nobel Prize tomorrow in chemistry, at the time of winning or at the time of your work published in chemistry? I don't know. Okay? Uh, for Nobel Prize, if price is set by more than one percent, weights are set for winners according to their proportion of the price. Okay, both in that. So, this is I think the problem uh, with LUS. They have the alumni group under young doctorate. I mean, they might get alumni. So the the, the race for talents are on. Uh, we talk for high side, high side, high cited. I think it's a top top of publication. We talk already that. Huh? Uh, engineering, ISI category, top every time. So, I come to the end of what I'm supposed to to come here for. This is the overall gist of what I wanted to say. For QS, this is the way. You have 164, you can 269, you have 355, mechanical, and average is just make uh, my life good 100, 150. Engineering and technology, this is the ranking, USM169, UM13, UTM256, UM53. So it's not good feeling number one, it's good how far you are from number two. So the hard system. But you see any small note, you think of all the other I don't know how. I don't know why our heart is created like that. We should be set. We can't pull in some things like that. Oh, wait, we are very far from that. <laughs> Time trial education, uh, none of us. I mean, uh, BSM is not there in the ranking. We, we, I don't think we participated. Uh, you can make it for Asian. Leiden, 
you have 196, you have 04. Uh, it's not available by by uh, tadi. Uh, you have seen some of them. Uh, for Shanghai Jiaotong, no Malaysian university is listed. Uh, you have UM is listed 400, 100, 500. I, I went through the website, uh, but data is not available. I think data is incomplete. So, uh, so that is the, the ranking given to us. Twice, I would like to end my presentation there. It's USM World Class University. I've given you the numbers. I've given you the criteria. I try to make a, a definition, even though it's a broken instrument. You have to make your own conclusion. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think um, we just, just take that off. Uh, we now open the ample time uh, for Q&A. So let's put from Riley uh, here and throw him all the questions you have in your mind regarding right things. Questions that have not been answered yet. So we have a guy here who can uh, talk right here to help us to clarify any uh, issues or any questions that you'd like to know about right things. I think just uh, maybe I can start the ball rolling. You, you have not answered actually your own question the title. Please get sent uh, <laughs> world class university. That's the answer. That's the answer. That's the answer. Okay, maybe, uh, I don't know, if you want to, to maybe elaborate a little bit more? I think we have something. Oh, yeah, maybe you'd like to share, yeah. yeah um, that is my first question as well. I mean, I'd like to know from you, what is your answer to this question? Anyone else? Yeah. Well, those of us like to know, what's your answer? Each of us come from different schools. We have different sets of criteria. I think the question is more important than that. Whenever you make decisions at a school, the narrative is always going to be the right narrative. Are we doing this for the right reason? Are we, is it going to help us become a world-class university? We have these faint ideas of what a world-class university should be. And it's yes and work as we should be the last one. It's not the first one. <laughs> Some other questions. That's a good question.
my uh, naive answer to you, you know, is that uh, we don't have the answers. My uh, simple comment, you know, is that uh, US 10 does not put itself into the comparison. There's a standard there for both uh, universally accepted instrument that we will measure how we work class in this team. We are not in it. We are not in measure. So with that definition like that I've shown, uh, we actually do not know our status. In other words, we do not know actually where our weakness is. Actually to me, these uh, instruments, you know, uh, the standards is good because then at least we know actually where we are and where our weaknesses and actually where we should spend more time and more time so that we can improve ourselves oh, oh, in comparing to world class university or not. But on another aspect, I feel that we are world class. Especially you know, with Apex University and we have this uh, blue ocean strategy and we know that we have our own oh, oh, unique niche for example, we are a sustainability led university, one of the first of its kind in the world. So, if you ask, you know, are we world class university with respect to sustainability led? Yes, we are. You know, so it depends actually on which aspect. But once again, you know, uh, what? I'm, I'm going to give this to Prof. <laughs> because I believe he's much older than me. I thought you were the speaker today. <laughs> you are the man with the answers today. <laughs> but, but anyhow, this is my personal opinion. I'm just sharing. Uh, I think the idea of world class, uh, there can be many definitions. Uh, yeah? I mean, just look at the different rankings available. All the rankings are based on slightly different criteria, sustainability level and whatnot. Yeah. So I think everybody are trying to play the, play the game. Uh. Yeah. Maybe try to define themselves so that they can be ranked higher. Yeah. So for me personally, I'm not too much into it. Uh. Yeah. Uh, except for certain related one where we don't, it doesn't require us to come in, I mean, uh, to provide some input. They get it from whatever is available. Uh, that's fine with me. No, no I should be taken on you. The <laughs> university <laughs> should be more alive. Some, some, some of the young ones should pick out. I mean, I'm, I'm not that old, but <laughs> the younger one. The <laughs> oh, the philosophers. <laughs> the Cartesian family. <laughs> and the Romans. We need to say something to express our uh, Something to say about, yeah. I think, let's see, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, US has just believed in something. We, we need to believe in something. That's the nature of man, you know. Not man, woman's money, that's okay. Uh, in the sense that we have beliefs, you know, there's the religion, that's why I know philosophy, but everybody has a philosophy, what's kind of so we need to have a stand. Okay, fine. If you believe in Leiden, okay, we go all out in Leiden. The problem is when we don't have a stand. Itu putana, ini putana, you know, or we're going to be like this. That, that's not good in the sense that it does not give any direction. For example, let's take about Leiden. I didn't know that, you know, until today, Leiden actually offers some competition. But we do have this. So is that our direction? Is that what we want to take? If we go, all right, then we let, let us all make clear to the world, okay, we're going to take Leiden as our religion, you know, we're going to live by the rules and principles set by it, and we show, okay, this is what we do there, we are a research university, we are an apex university, we are supposed to go along this line, then why don't we make that stand? Why do we uphold that now? I'm not saying, you know, the university is not making that stand, but the, it, it is a fact because we think we are not taking anything in fact. So which should not be university. I think as, as an academic you should have a belief, you should have a stand. What do you believe in? So the question is back at you. What do you believe in? 
everybody. Yeah, that it's young ones are speaking up. I think I think uh, I'm one of the youngest lecturers in USM, and uh, I would like to share some of my experience uh, and my view. Uh, I took my PhD at uh, Oxford University, one of the top university uh, in the world, as everyone knows. So I think I might be in the position to share uh, what I have seen, you know, and uh, what I experienced uh, compared to uh, USM. And uh, I have also had the opportunities to visit some of the US University, the top university like Harvard University, MIT, Caltech, UCLA, and I spent some time, although it's just a day visit, to to look around the university and the labs because I have some friends working in the labs. Okay, so I think I'm in a quite a good position to share uh, uh, in terms of at least the facilities and the manpowers. In those universities, if you go to see, their labs are very well established, the instrumentations, you know, if you go into the university, there is a whole area, uh, I mean, for research, research lab, you know, UCLA, Harvard University, you know, I would say more than 50% of the hardware at the buildings are attributed to research. And this is one thing, this is what we cannot compare in a way. And in terms of manpower, the graduate students, postdoc, we don't have money you know, to hire any postdoc. Uh, because I believe postdoc is really important because this is where uh, most of the research outcome uh, are coming from, uh, I mean, the researchers, uh, full-time researchers. Uh, as we cannot work full-time in the lab, as the lecturers, we have teaching duties, and we don't have money to hire any postdoc, and we are very difficult to even find a uh, graduate student because we don't have funding to provide to them uh, and also the lab for example in my lab after returning here for more than two years we are still in, working for budgets for the film pool so these are the things these are the realities I say you know we cannot just plug on the cell that we are world class university because in my view we are still quite far away towards maybe the top. We want to compare to the top, maybe to the top hundreds. So these are some realities. Uh, and also these are some dilemma that we are facing, that we want to do research, but we don't have enough money uh, waiting for RU grant, waiting for even short-term grants. These are the few things. Uh, <laughs> if you think about it, you can become quite depressed. So <laughs> Uh, this is my humble view. I hope it, uh, you know, this is what I'm going to share. Thank you. Yeah, let me invest back the forum from you all. This is the data for the highly cited scientists, one of the criteria for, from Shanghai Zhao Tong. On the top is 186, the number of scientists that is within the highly cited form. This is for the whole of Canada, it's 186. For the whole of Harvard, there are 187. So, you must imagine, you must be able now to put that idea in your head, the distillation process. The best of us goes to Canada, the whole of Canada distillates into Harvard. Do you, do you understand that? If you understand that, then we, we, we can put ourselves in that rank. If we are second to Harvard, then if there's only 2% in the world, Harvard and Earth, then we'll be second. But that doesn't mean that we are very close to Harvard. No. So, with that in mind, I will try to answer whether we are a world class. I think a world class university has 
than your status. At the beginning, yes, we can rely on QS because it's a perception. But we have to migrate slowly to test and to Leiden. And perhaps Leiden is the most institutionally um, easy to go. We don't have any administrative overburden. There's no burden on us to fill out forms and answer questions. It's not they just go to the ISI's database and, and do what they want with the data. To me, I would prefer Leiden Bank because then I don't have to do anything. I mean, it's a fair thing and I think it's, it's a good thing. And once you are in Leiden Banking, the QS guys and the test guys cannot ignore you. They cannot ignore you. If you're, if you're number one in Southeast Asia and suddenly they want, oh, you cannot be number one, you have to be number three or something, like number four. It, they just cannot ignore you. And they, they, have, they will come to your door, please participate because they are making money from this. The school guys, the test and the QS are making money. I think that's what told me they want 500,000 ringgit just for us to get the test. So it's not it's not a free thing. I'm not sure because he told me he told me about the, the amount of money required to do that. So that's the that's the first thing. The Shanghai Jiao is a guide for us. I agree with you. It is a guide for us that wow, if you have an alumni which is a normal price winner, then you know you can ten dollars say that this is a good university. But it also means that. Only those universities who are working on the fundamental research can go into Shanghai. If we are using it in a flag, in Tamawa. Okay? So, so those are the two things. Are we a world class university? The answer to that question. To me, I think we are. When I sit down, it's not that I say it, but this guy keeps on saying you are. This period. But what class that university doesn't mean that you are in the top 10. What class that university we are in the top 500? It's a broken instrument. Huh. It makes you feel good after leaving this hall, saying that we are a world class university. I'll tell you we are a world class university. I mean, at least my school is. <laughs> I'm not sure about Prof. Tadidin's school, but my school is. We are slightly better than the University of California at San Diego. That's, that's what it's like. I know of that. So, you are right. Why then we did not have the courage to participate? Well, it's a managerial decision. The narrative must be, that's why I emphasize on the, on the narrative at the beginning of my lecture. If you are there and you don't mind losing, it's okay. But, but in Malaysia, losing is a big thing. Okay, if today you are at rank 100, tomorrow rank 300, then deal with, hey, what happened to you? So, we have these two cultures. Suka menang, takut kalah. Kita kata ke orang, tapi sebenarnya kita takut kalah. I mean, if you want to, 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 uh, want to, to go and compete in Olympic, we must be ready to lose. Our job is to prepare. First, anybody from education? Oh, oh sorry. Oh. I'm going to talk about a little bit on the philosophy. Neil Postman. The end of education. You read this book? Neil Postman? He said that, Is it that look? I can't remember. Oh, Nesbitt, Nesbitt, sorry, Thomas Nesbitt. Intelligence and how to get He said, you should praise your children for the effort that they put in and not for the results. All of us today, most of us today, look at the results. But we forgot about the effort. It is the effort. And I, I credit the achievement of the SM to Tansi Musa. No, I do not know him personally because he put the criteria that all of your lecturers must have PhD. And when the time comes for us for our exercise, we are ready for our exercise. And when it comes for FX, we are ready for FX. Just imagine UTM now is running at 67%. And out of this 67%, we can safely assume 80% is not productive. Safely. Only 20, 20 by 6 percent, only 15% is producing papers. Fuck it. UTM trying to get out of this that climbing up a big wall just to get out of it. We don't believe what? We are already 100, 200. So the work that goes into it, they say, look at the health of the person before you look at the performance of the person. Look at the health of the university before you look at the performance of the university. Sometimes we overlook that. Tak cukup makan, tak boleh buat research. Tak cukup instrument, tak boleh buat research. Tak cukup family budget, tak boleh jadi national renowned figures. All things are interrelated. But, is research a rich man's game? 
Are we a rich country? Are we a poor country? Should we act like a rich man? Should we act like a poor man? Can we do research for world class level and low budget? Can we? Should we? All these questions are operational questions. I mean, we middle managers always talk about operations, but nobody knows talk lah. Next year, budget will cut another thirty percent. So, <laughs> so, we, so whether we can be a world class university next year, I don't know. But the, the answer to all that, I think we are a world class university. But again, that world class is a broken instrument. I would like to believe that all of us are within that top five hundred. Some of us are within the top one hundred, top two hundred. It doesn't matter. As long as we have to work hard, I think we have to praise the effort. And let the results be decided by, learned by, by the powers. Okay, I think we should. Any more? Well, so we have to take a few more. Few more. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always, you know, uh, to find a cheap food game on the side. Tokai. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So, yeah, I'm the only person. Oh yeah, it's about property. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, it is um, the whatever ranking it is, the Welcome Karana is very scientific um, technology, medical engineering base. Uh, of course, you have to provide I uh, well science very purely, mostly ninety five percent scientific and whatnot. Okay, not that there are like you know humanities near you know under ISI, you might have them. But it just you know it is about the narrative. It is the science narrative. Okay, so it doesn't put us anywhere who are from the social science, humanities, and the arts. And if you are talking about your about citation rankings, I and stuff like that. And you know, we're just like. Before you start, you think Harvard is all science? Yeah. Do you think Harvard is all science? Yeah. So the emphasis in Malaysia is all on science. You know, science tech, but then the emphasis on American universities, universities are also on liberal arts. Okay, then whatever it is that we are kind of like post it on the ranks and all that, are uh, not part very scientific base, uh, rather than the, because the emphasis is not highly on the you know humanities and the arts. Yeah, of course you can dispute that, of course. <laughs> but, but when it is always been presented in such a way, it is like as if like you know that you know that social science and humanities. Yeah, of course. I mean, ada bukannya tak ada, ada. Yeah, I admit that. Yeah, ada. But then you see like one, two, three, four. Okay. Um, social science is not like you know, um, you know the part of science and so. But. I do, but then all the, you know, you mean all the instruments are only mostly on that. I mean, you're talking about a small percentage in which we can do. I'm like looking at how we, from the arts, humanities, can contribute more in this in this so-called game, okay? In which we cannot publish paper, it will take a little like five, six months to publish a 20, 20, 30 page. You know, paper. I mean, as our colleague, he mentions that maybe what we want to know is that the reassurance that we are also contributing towards this. While our point, you know, okay, we can only get published one or two papers a year, and it is a significant contribution. You know, when we heard like professors who contributed like 300 papers a year, then like we feel that, oh um, yeah. But you know, like we are putting an effort here. But it's just that. Maybe once in a while that you could like be sure of us. Have you made up your mind on this? Can I change you? Can I influence you or I you, mean, you? <laughs> if you I already made up your mind that I'm not, I'm because all the arts lectures that I talk to, first they say to me, we do not like to be judged.
profession um, at University of Niagara National and then I joined uh, the private sector in communications and I understand how the arts people feel because you know it's it's different from the science in a sense that like the Leiden is based on data and before joining the corporate sector I had very little um, appreciation for math or science or IT or measurement but then, <coughs> um, the communications department is always based on ROI, you know, return on investment. The business world is always based on return on investment. And then my boss says, you have to not only do, show that you are working, um, not only do the work, but show that you are doing the work. And I learned about graphs and charts and numbers and measurements and indicators that matter to the audience, you see? And then like, um, oh, he left. <laughs> yeah, like what Prof. Z uh, Zaidi mentioned, the Leiden is very good because it's very objective. You know, even if we don't participate, no matter how hard you try to hide, you're just going to get whatever data is out there. And I find that it's very good because it's objective. It's not based on survey, but it's based on whatever is out there on the internet. And I think that USM is a world-class university. I was a graduate from 1998, you know? And I haven't been to the university for 
quite a long time, more than 10 years. And then I went to talk, teach um, English in China. And that HSBC ad that you just saw is very, very true. When I went to China, I don't speak Mandarin. I don't understand. I can't read Mandarin. It was a total culture shock. I stayed in my apartment after work, you know, for three months because it was just terrible listening, reading, everything in Mandarin. 24 hours, the neighbors are very noisy. China is a very noisy country. They don't sleep, you know. It, it's, just, it's just like that. But after five years, I can speak Mandarin. It's a very difficult language to speak. And my children, my family do not speak Mandarin. But I made the decision to send my children to a Chinese school because the world is very competitive. The, it is competitive. And when I came to USM, and I was like, ooh, APEC status, what's that? You know? And I was like, and we are the only university in Malaysia to get that. And now we are in the second phase. And I find it quite interesting that today's crowd is quite depressed, you know? But when I came back, I was like, wow, you know, USM has changed so much. Seriously. I mean, as potential, um, I'm a parent, okay? And, you know, when, and I mean, I'm with the strategic communications office now, and we have to come up with advertisements um, to market USM to the world, you know? <laughs> Definitely, today's session is not very encouraging, but USM is a world-class university. I mean, if um, Times Higher Education Ranking and QS Ranking base um, its ranking strategy on history, we have it. We are one of the oldest universities in Southeast Asia. That's one thing to be proud about. And we have 25 years of history. We have the buildings, we have the campus. Now I market uh, USM as a five-star university because we have the facilities. And then um, I hear of a young lecturer saying that our facilities cannot compete with Harvard, Oxford and all that. They are way older than us. We are considered a young university. But for a young university, our facilities are not bad compared to China. Um, China has money now, number one. So they are all out to spend and they are all out to get their universities at a world class. But then number two, um, ARW, they ranked 10 or 12 universities. All of them were American. To me, I find that it is political because China and US has such a long history and they, are, they have a love-hate relationship with each other. They don't like each other yet. They try to outdo each other. So China will always have this top 10 universities as the benchmark. So it's very political, you know? It's not objective like the Leiden rankings. So anyway, I just wanted to end on a positive note that we are a world-class university. And then two, we may not have a lot of money, but I also work at uh, the World Fish Center. If you have no idea what it is, it is actually an international research organization, part of the World Bank, and it's in uh, Batu Mau. It's a very small outfit, but we have like 30 um, researchers in fisheries and aquaculture. They come from all over the world. We don't have a lot of money, but our internships, you know, students from all over the world email call for summer internships which is like two to three months you don't have to pay them they will fly from us uk they will pay for their own board and living as long as i can do two to three months with the researchers there and i find that you know USM has a lot of good academics you should create internships you are good in your own fields. Publish that, promote that, contact us. 
I am looking for research articles from all of you to highlight and showcase in academ um, advanced research initiatives. If you haven't heard from your research dean, please contact him or her because I've been trying to call up a lot of people. Kupang Korean and engineering campus have been very um, supportive, but some of the arts, they were quite turned off by advanced research initiatives. But I managed to convince two of them that if you have a different idea, a different project, it doesn't mean it has to be some scientific paper. You know, for example, uh, humanities school, the current theme for advanced research initiatives is clinical and health sciences. So they were like, oh, we're not going to have anything in there. But one of them submitted something very relevant. It's from the geography school. And there's and more than five minutes. Yeah, I'm finishing. <laughs> Okay, um, it's a GIS project mapping out uh, the number of breast, colorectal, and something cancers in Kelantan. You know, it's humanities, but it's also science, and it is health. So, I'm hoping to hear from you and <laughs> stay positive. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, I will wrap up now. Um, so today's uh, session is actually not trying to seek answers, uh, but rather I think uh, probably Prof Zaidi has given us maybe a perspective for us to look at uh, the data and the different rankings uh, system that we have. Um, but if I just uh, uh, look at look what at those data from my own perspective, I think we are somewhere, yeah? We are somewhere, but the most precious thing that we have in the SF is the talents. So these are the things that we need to continue to nurture, yeah, our, our academic staff. Uh, and uh, research-wise, although now we have a lot of uh, budget cut, and so, <coughs> but with the talents that we have now, I think uh, it's still quite promising. I think the future is still quite promising. Uh, <coughs> So uh, with that, um, I would like to thank our uh, speaker today, from Zaidi Ahmad uh, I know he has a hard time to really to address this, this topic. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. It's always controversial. So uh, please uh, join me to uh, thank you and have a to Dr. Zaidi.